Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm making this quick video uh, that wasn't planned, um, but I was just reading through the comments on my videos earlier, and I came across a comment that I ended up responding to in detail. And um, the reason is because I, I get where they're coming from. Uh, they're, they're angry and they're bitter against God and against Christianity and Christians in general um, because of, well, probably because of life circumstances and um, not feeling like God has, uh, not feeling like God loves them. And also just because of all the nonsense and hypocrisy and things they see in Christianity and from other people that claim to follow Jesus. And so I posted a response to them and but I also printed that out because I wanted to read it to you. I think there are a lot of people that feel this way. And so this is my response. Um, maybe it'll help somebody who feels that way also. Thanks for sharing. It seems weird to make judgments about God based on what people do. I guess that's what you mean by fake happiness the way some people lacked. But Jesus himself wasn't all that happy. The Bible says that he was a man of sorrows. I also don't know anything about any, as you say, big fluffy Jesus in the clouds. If you read the Gospels for yourself, you'll see that Jesus was no pansy or wimp. Give me an effing break. Sounds to me like you're bitter at Christians about things that have nothing to do with God. I get it. The truth is the Bible said it would be that way. 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 5 is not talking about unbelievers. It's talking about people who call themselves Christians. So the fact that so many Christians are unloving jerks, that shouldn't surprise anyone. By the way, God did come down and speak to you. He became a man and walked on the earth. He suffered the same problems and temptations that you and I face every day. He also dealt with the self-righteous hypocrites. And if you read the Bible, you'll find that he was also furious at them. And this God whom you refer to as big and fluffy as if he's some kind of pansy or wimp, this God got down on his knees and washed the dirty feet of a man who would betray him later that night, a man that would send him to his death. This God, who became a man in Christ, laid down his life to pay the debt of your sin to restore your relationship with God. And I'm not just talking about his earthly beating or the crown of thorns. The crown of thorns. Don't think for one minute that that was the reason he was sweating blood the night before. Lots of people have endured torture for their faith. The reason Christ was so stressed that he was sweating blood had nothing to do with that. It was because he knew he was going to be crushed under the furious wrath of Almighty God for the sins of the world. The Bible even says that God was pleased to do it. So don't tell me that God has never done anything to prove his love to you or anyone else. Why did he do it? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7 tells us perfectly. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. That's it. That's the truth. He did it for you. Therefore, repent. Cry out to Jesus so that all those are repent. Cry out to Jesus and know that all those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, anyway, I felt strongly about that. I wanted to share it with you. And uh, let me know, uh, you know, if, if you've ever felt that way, like this person did, or maybe you still do. Let me know in the comments or reach out to me. May the grace of Jesus be with you. Amen.